there are a lot of energy put on making sustainable housing units, but they are inheriting, they are using the same residential modes that we used 100 years ago. If you rethink everything, the whole system should be changed. The two main things we work with is digital design and digital fabrication. With digital design, you can mathematically adjust your design so that in every point of the building is totally adapted to the exact conditions of the exterior. The south corner is the, the one with biggest uh, cantilevers. That's why during the whole day you, the sun never enters in the building while it's doing completely the opposite thing in winter. The structure, as you can see, is conventional structure. The thing that is new is to adopt in each point of the facade to the exact conditions of the exterior. And this is the thing that software is giving us. The windows here are smaller, are getting smaller because they are getting close to the north corner. The north corner is totally opaque. All the industrialization methods couldn't afford that change of geometries. Because in the old manufacturing methods, all the pieces have to be equal to optimize the production. You were just cutting the same piece 1,000 times. Now, for the machine, it's the same. The machine that is reading the code from the computer, for the machine, for the drill, is the same to draw this path and to draw another different, to, to draw the same 1,000, but all of them different. It doesn't optimize to make it equal. That's why the house is different in all facades, because it's been driven by the sun path. It's not by optimization rules of the market. We don't need to make 1,000 facade pieces equal, but we can do it really adapted to the exterior conditions or production conditions. We did it in two weeks, two weeks of construction. You built this house in two weeks? Yeah, it was like three weeks pre-construction, pre-assembly, and two weeks the actual assembly on site. Digital fabrication is you prepare everything, all the details in the computer, you send it to the, to the machines and the machines cut it like a puzzle. So at the end, the machines give you the pieces already like, like a 3D puzzle. So you just connect the pieces and, and that's it. The wood came with all the joints prepared. We didn't have to add any screw, everything. The facade modules came pre-assembled, so everything is like you were plugging the things to the, to the conventional structure. This is thanks to the digital production means. Digital production is making open the process of fabrication. So directly, the results from the software, you send these files to the, the machines directly. It's like a printer at the end. So you can, the same way you print uh, words, you, you cut wood. So the, these technologies are getting cheaper enough so that the same way we have copy services to make photocopies, we'll have in few years uh, fabrication services. Digital production is a kind of high-level customized production means. So at the end, you can do whatever shape you want, but the final product is like a prefabricated thing. So it's a balance between prefabrication and uh, total customization. Everything is quite conventional, except the model of the facade that is where the intelligence is. It's just a single component, as you can see there. It's just a cantilever that has all the intelligence that the house needs, insulation, energy, storage. So air conditioning is integrated in the same module down there. Uh, natural ventilation and natural light system is the window itself. And the module that is on top of that is producing shadow, it's controlling the, the sunlight, it's producing electricity on top, it's producing storage spaces inside and uh, interior lighting that is integrated in an indirect way in the, in the same component. So, in general, all the systems are quite transparent, quite evident. High technology used to be opaque, so people doesn't understand it, but in this case, everything is evident, the structure is, is evident, the floor, uh, all the constructions, assembly, joints, everything is 
it's evident. Even the solar panels, you can touch them up outside. You can see how they are connected. So everything is like close to the to the user. They call it soft technology. So like a bicycle, you can fix it when it gets broke. Even you can customize it. We are not trying to make a house. We are trying just to develop a facade system that can be applied to a house or to a offices buildings. It's just an abstract, unscaled component. Now everybody can produce things and interchange things. At the beginning was data when internet came out, but now you can perform a design, for example this one, and you can code this design what we call uh, parametric design. You can upload the, the code, the raw code, and anybody can download the files and send the files to the, to the workshop, cut the pieces and fabricate their own house. The houses, they are just some logic, geometrical logics and orientation logics. You can enter in the code and modify it so that you can adapt the design to your location. For example, you can download the thing for Helsinki and modify the parameters you need in Helsinki and the houses, the whole geometry is getting, I don't know, closer with the panels more vertical. You see, now we are generating 16 uh, kilowatts hour and we are consuming 10. Now we are in summer, so even being with this uh, huge expense of air conditioning, we are always producing like 150%. All these hyper-connected new technologies is to produce more interchanges between people and to lower the scale of the production of things at the same time. So no longer you are going to consume energy that is produced uh, 400 kilometers away in a nuclear station, but you are consuming the energy that your neighbor is producing. Your neighbor can be producing more energy than he needs in a moment where you need something that you are not producing, so, so you share the things. The same thing is going to happen with the cars. At the end, the car will be the battery, the storage point where you store the energy that you don't need. So cars, mobility and, and housing will be connected somehow. The most efficient thing is to consume less. The logic of this pavilion are thought if you optimize the climatic conditions of the house, you consume less. So that's a good starting point. And then you could not just consume less, but produce.